Hey guys, I'm going to read a short section of Spurgeon's Warrant of Faith since Luke and I finished the discussion after about three or four weeks on his channel because uh, I keep getting messages from people saying, ah, you're all lost. You haven't repented of your sin. So let me let me be clear here. They say you, you're a double talker. Okay, I'm going to be real clear so you hear me. Okay. You have not repented of your sins. <gasps> How do you know? You don't know me because you're breathing. And the same standard you lay on others condemns you yourself. Thought of foolishness is sin. Whatsoever of faith is not. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. There's sins you commit you don't know you commit. David talks about those. There's sins of omission. Plus, we're not saved by our performance or our ability to keep the law. And sin is transgression of the law. So to tell somebody to repent of sin to be saved is to tell them to repent of breaking the law, which means to keep the law. And by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And Christ has become of no effect to you, whosoever of you is justified by the law. So I stand and I make no apologies for the grace of God, because that is alone what saves you. It is Christ crucified and risen that gives us eternal life. And our faith in that, that's it. It's God's grace through the vehicle of faith that we're saved. And if you don't believe that, you're not saved. You need to get saved. Because you're trusting in you. So I'm going to read something by Spurgeon, believe it or not, uh, called Warrant of Faith. Now I'm going to start here. First, negatively, first of all, let me just explain. It says repentance towards God and a faith towards Christ. Repent from dead works of the law and a faith towards God. All right? God grant true repentance, the acknowledging of the truth. is to change your mind and trust Christ and stop trusting in your idols or whatever you're trusting in. Most people trust in how good they are. You have not had your mouth stopped by the law. Because every time I think I'm getting better, God reveals another fault in me. and shows me how much I've fallen short of him. And any saved person would tell you, yes, we all still sin. Because I know there's things in my heart and in my thoughts that are not in alignment with God. Because people don't get that the flesh wars against the spirit and God's standard for the law is perfection. And in Matthew 5, Jesus made it very clear, you have heard it said, but I say. You have heard it said, don't commit adultery, but I say if you look at a woman with laws, you've already committed adultery. I say if you hate your brother, you murdered him. He upped the standards of the law. Well, who can be saved? Ah, that's where you need to be. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Unfortunately, most, have, most people haven't had their mouths stopped. They haven't shut up by the law. And that's where you need to get. You're not good. You haven't repented of your sin. You're out of your mind. You have not. And you come here and condemn me and everybody else here. Accuser of the brethren. Satan already has a job. You don't need to take his. All right, so let me read what Spurgeon said. First, negatively, and here my first observation is that other way of preaching the gospel warrant is absurd. If I am to preach faith in Christ to a man is regenerated, and he's going against Calvinism here, then the man being regenerated is saved already, and it's unnecessary and ridiculous thing for me to preach Christ to him and bid him to believe in order to be saved when he's saved already being regenerate. But you will, because he said you must be born again. But you will tell me that I ought to preach it only to those who repent of their sins. Huh. Very well. But since true repentance of sin is the work of the Spirit, any man who has repentance is most certainly saved because evangelical repentance can never exist in an unrenewed soul. So you're telling an unsaved, unregenerate person to turn from their sins when they have no desire for it at all. That is a work of the Spirit you put in the cart before the horse. Now, secondly, I disagree with his, uh, his understanding of what repentance is. It can mean to feel sorry for sin, but that's metamalomai in Greek, not metanoia, metaneo. Metanoia, metaneo is simply change of mind. And that's what God repents all the time. He changes his mind. And that's usually the word used here. But let's just go with Spurgeon's understanding of repentance. Even he himself says that has nothing to do with being or getting saved. Because repentance from sin is a work of the Holy Spirit. It's godly sorrow. Okay? And you can't demand that of an unsaved person. And you don't come over to save people and say, you have repented of your sins just because we preach Christ crucified alone. 
We're not telling people not to turn from their sins. We're telling them don't trust in it for salvation. I honestly don't think these people even watch my videos, to be honest with you, because they usually post a verse that I know they're going to post, and so I address it in the video, and they still post it. So I don't think they listen. And he said, uh, this is preaching Christ to the righteous and not to sinners. It tells us here this is a gospel for saints. You're going to try to make yourself a saint in your work. You can't be good enough. See, I'm just, just sick of it. Nay, saith one, but we mean that a man must have some good desires towards Christ before any, he has any warrant to believe. Friend, do you not know what all good desires have some degree of holiness in them? But if a sinner has any degree of true holiness in him, it must be the work of the Spirit. For true holiness never exists in the carnal mind. Therefore, that man is already renewed and therefore saved. Are we to go running up and down the world proclaiming life to a living, casting bread to those who are fed already, and holding up Christ on the pole of the gospel to those who are already healed? My brethren, where is the inducement to labor where our efforts are so little needed? If I am to preach Christ to those who have no goodness, who have nothing in them that qualifies them for mercy, then I feel I have the gospel so divine that I would proclaim it with my last breath, crying aloud, that, quote, Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Sinners as sinners, not as penitent sinners, not as repenting sinners or as awakened sinners, but sinners as sinners, quote, of whom I am chief we come to christ just as we are and he saves us right there and then it's none of your business what process god works on his children to clean up their lives to serve his purpose you have no right to come anywhere and say you're not saved because you haven't repented of me. you don't know anything about any of us so just zip it brother because you haven't been saved yet you have not become guilty before God and said, I am trusting only in your death, burial, and resurrection. I am a hopeless, lost person, and only your blood makes me clean. You haven't gotten there yet. So I don't consider you a believer because you haven't trusted him. So you need to get saved first and stop coming and worrying about what saved people are doing in their walk. All right, so it says to tell the sinner that he is to believe on Christ because of some warrant in himself, meaning, I feel bad for my sins. I am penitent. I desire things that are of God in order to be saved. Then you're looking to yourself and something in you instead of God's simple command to believe on his son for salvation. It's, it's just ridiculous. All right, so he even says that if, if you tell someone that they must have a desire to repent of their sins, won't their faith in their, be in their ability to repent of their sins? Yes, it will. It'll be in their feeling or their ability to clean up their flesh instead of what Christ did. Christ saved me, but I did this and I did that. It's a bunch of garbage. I wish I could find that one verse where he says, if you think that somebody has to repent of their sins to be saved, then your foundation is no, no longer Christ and him crucified. It's your sin repentance. And good luck getting into heaven with that. But Lord, Lord, didn't I repent of my sins? Didn't I preach? And I don't know you. Depart from me. Worker of iniquity. Because that's what your works are. They're inequity. You need God's works on your account. You need God's righteousness by simple childlike faith in Christ. And you haven't done it. You haven't done it. If you have trusted Christ alone to save you, you have repented to salvation. You have changed your mind and stopped trusting in yourself and you've trusted in the Savior. You know, that is his name. Savior. God is my salvation, not Renee is my salvation. It has not, those in the flesh can't please God. You can't please God with your performance. Really, your holiness is a joke. Your righteousnesses are as filthy rags. They can't get you or keep you saved. And they certainly don't make you qualify for his grace. Because then it's no longer grace. For him that worketh, 
is the reward no longer reckoned a grace, but of debt. But for him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith counted for righteousness. I'm ungodly, I qualify. And I believe, and I'm justified of all things, perfected forever. So I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this garbage coming in. You're all going to hell you didn't repent of your sins. Liar! You didn't repent of your sins either. You're just blind to it. You've lowered the standards of God's law. Well, I'm not that bad. I don't do this. I'm not like that guy. You're still lost. And you need to come to him and get saved. Period. I'm going to keep standing for the truth. Call me a fraud. Call me a liar. I don't care. Good for you. Hate me. I'm over it. I'm used to it. I knew this would happen. People hate God's grace because they think they deserve salvation more. You've done nothing to save yourself. And you need to come to the end of yourself. And I hope you do. I want everyone saved because God does. God bless, guys.